Uh, hi there, folks. Um, it's just me, your friendly neighborhood, Walter Shepard. Um, I hope you're doing well. Um, I've been, I've been doing well myself. Um, I've been very busy, and um, it's certainly been a different kind of summer. <clears throat> and I hope your summer has been blessed, and um, I hope the rest of your summer um, will be blessed uh, with what you're doing um, for the Lord and uh, what you're doing out there. Um, to be a good servant um, in the world, uh, showing the people out there um, your version of, of of what Jesus would be like, because really that's how you should be living your life, um, as if uh, um, as if Jesus were, uh, were 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 living in your place, doing what you were doing, uh, living um, with the with the people um, that are are around you. Um, how would uh, would Jesus interact with them? And um, uh, we, uh, we are to be um, his example of, of what Jesus is. Because uh, when we're like Jesus, um, then we're um, like the Father. Because Jesus is the embodiment of the Father. <clears throat> and, um, and we're all just children of, um, of our Heavenly Father, sitting, sitting, <laughs> sitting under the Lordship of, uh, of, of, of Jesus. Anyway, um, I'm just kind of rambling here. Uh, it's Saturday afternoon. Um, it's been a uh, it's been a pretty busy day so far, um, and I'm just kind of um, relaxing right now, uh, just kind of uh, calming down. And um, I just felt okay. Uh, now is the time to uh, to put together a little uh, a video uh, rambling, uh, kind of an update, um, uh, a bit of encouragement. And um, basically, just um, uh, just keeping in touch uh, with all you uh, good people out there. Um, I've I, I've been away from the internet for a while. Um, I've just recently been uh, been back on um, Facebook, and um, uh, I have another YouTube channel that um, I've been uh, I've been manning, which has allowed me to get back onto uh, onto uh, YouTube, <clears throat> and I'll speak about that in a second. Um, I will show you what's going on, what I've been doing, but um, yeah, now now that uh, I've been um, more connected with the online thing, I thought it was about time to uh, put together a little um, a little update for uh, for this other YouTube channel that uh, that I've been consistently working on for five or six years, um, and that's the believer side of things. Um, one of the coins the uh, the Lord has given me. Um, and and for you servants out there, um, I hope you're respon being responsible with the with the coins and the talents that the Lord is giving you, that um, that you're investing them, um, that you're using them um, for uh, for His kingdom and for his, and and for the glory of the heavenly Father, using your talents, using your skills, um, using your daily life, um, your your interaction with people, um, whether you're at school, whether you're at work, whether you're just out there in the world, or whether you're just out there in the family. Um, that's um, one of the places where we got to be responsible with, and so um, we just um, we're just we're just being helpful. Uh, we we show the love of the Father by, um, by by just loving on other people, by looking after other people, taking care of other people, um, helping other people out, um, just being out there in the world and being um, be, being a good example of a servant. Um, uh, after all, um, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Um, the one who is servant to all. And that first started with Jesus. And, um, um, and then um, we're, we're, we're to be like him, uh, more and more like him um, every day. Every day the Holy Spirit is, is, is working in our lives, um, especially when, when we're reading the Bible and especially when we're praying and when we're in a good relationship. Um, then your image... Um, of Jesus is being um, authored and being perfected um, even faster than someone who's not uh, reading the Bible or not in prayer and stuff like that. Um, but still, the Lord knows our hearts and, and, and He knows what we can handle in the world and He knows how much of His, His Word we can handle and how much responsibility we can handle and, and, and He understands all that. Um, um, he called you because uh, you have particular uh, skills and talents, because you have particular contacts out there in the world um, to show the love of God, to show the love of Jesus out there. And, uh, and, and, and just being a good example of, of a Christian is, um, is, 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 is one of the best things um, that you can do. 
Um, reading the Bible is also another good thing because sometimes conversations come up there in the world um, and, and there might be a, some sort of topic that they ask about the Bible or about Jesus or about God or, or, or about prophecy or the end times or whatever. So if you're well read on the Bible, um, then when you're um, out there in the world interacting with people, your effectiveness is that much greater because then the Holy Spirit can immediately bring to your mind those verses of the Bible that fit that situation um, of which uh, that person has uh, asked you about. So that's why the Bible says be, re be ready in season and out of season. And also to, uh, to hide the Word of God in your heart um, because... Um, in, in one of the extreme scenarios, there is a scenario where, where one day, say we're still here and the Antichrist has taken over and he's starting to clean house, which means he's getting rid of everything Christian. And so one day um, we might have to, or there will be a branch of Christians, um, whether they be the left behind Christians or um, we Christians that um, uh, face the Antichrist before the rapture. We might see the Antichrist before the rapture, in which case, we might get to the point where, um, like I was saying, the Antichrist is going to clean house and um, he's going to come in and remove everything Christian. All the Bibles will be gone, everything Christian from the internet will be gone, and he'll be weeding out the Christians um, from home to home. And so if you don't have a Bible um, in your possession and you have no ac access to a Bible, um, it just makes it that much more difficult to, um, uh, uh, to um, what's that word, to comfort yourself. Um, because the Bible is a great comfort when you have it there to read in your hands because that's the Word of God. Everything God wants you to know is written down in the pages of your Bible. And so that's why God wants you to read the whole thing from cover to cover because everything in there is, is everything that He wants everyone to know. Um, and so if one day all of a sudden your Bible did, disappeared, how much of it have you hidden in your heart? Um, just two or three verses have you memorized, um, one or two chapters, one or two books do you know by heart, um, what about the rest of the Bible? I mean there's, there's a lot of comfort there that's missing because you haven't spent time reading your Bible. And um, again, I don't mean to harp on that, but you guys have no idea how, how, how important um, uh, reading your Bible and hiding the Word of God in your heart is um, in your daily life out there um, with the world. Um, that's exactly what the prayer of Jabez was all about. When that first came along, um, and yes, I'm rambling and I just went off onto another subject, <clears throat> but when that, um, when that fad came along in the 90s, there was a lot of people that were using the prayer of Jabez as, um, as if it were some sort of magic formula. You just pray this prayer, then all of a sudden the Lord's going to bless them with millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that were disappointed and there's a lot of people that really hold some kind of grudge against this um, prayer of Jabez things. But in order to understand that, you had to have read the manual that talked all about it, the book that talked all about it. Because it wasn't just about um, saying this prayer. But um, when you said that prayer, and I forget where it is exactly, but that prayer was talking about um, the Lord... Um, enlargening your lands, enlargening your, 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 your financial gain, your, your, your monetary stuff like that. And I know it sounds like a prosperity thing, but the prayer of Jabez wasn't. Um, what people didn't understand in, 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 in that whole prayer of Jabez, because they didn't bother to read um, all the support material, and it was just this tiny little book, support material, it took like half an hour to read. Um, but what that was all about is that thing was talking about reading the Bible, getting to know as much of the Bible as you can. Because when you have the Word of God in your heart and in your mind, then the Holy Spirit can allow it to come out in your ordinary conversation, in your ordinary conduct, in your personality. And when that comes out in your personality, when you're out there in the general public, people will find that attractive. Because when you're speaking, the Holy Spirit is helping to paraphrase the Word of God that you have written, written in your heart. And so whatever business is that you're in, um, whatever your influence is in the world, it's going to attract more and more people. So that's what the prayer of Jabez was saying. It's saying, the more you read your Bible, 
the more the Holy Spirit can pour through you the Word of God that will attract the people around you and thus doing so will increase your lands, will increase your finances. And that's basically what the, what, what the prayer of Jabez is. And, 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 and the people who, who uh, were just looking at it as an, an, an instant overnight get rich quick thing, they were, they were sorely disappointed. Mainly because they didn't want to put in the work of actually reading the Bible. They saw reading the Bible as being a burden. And, um, and it's not. It's not. If, if you guys start reading, it, it, you guys, um, I'm hoping that most of um, the subscribers listening to this um, have actually read the Bible from cover to cover. Uh, I've been encouraging that um, for, for years now. If you're a regular subscriber, you'll know that's one of the things that I, could, that, that I strongly encourage is, um, is reading the Bible and getting into an intimate prayer life with your Lord. Um, with um, with Jesus himself, with the Holy Spirit, and with your Heavenly Father, with your Abba Father, enjoying your Abba Father um, in, in, in your everyday life. And that's your pop. When you get to know God on a, on, on, on a level so well, you can laugh and joke with him like he was your dad, like he was your pop. That's why the Bible says we can call him Abba Father. We can get to that level where the Lord God Almighty, who, who, who we revere and we respect because he is the creator of everything. So we respect God as being the Lord God Almighty, the ultimate everything. But at the same time, um, Jesus has allowed us to come in and out of the kingdom so that we can come face to face with God. And we can know God on such a level that... We can think of him as our dad, as our pop. We can just talk to him just like we would anybody else. And getting to that stage is assisted and aided by reading the Bible. Um, if you want to know a good, quick um, study in order to get to know the character and personality of God, read the book of Psalms, all 150 of them. Um, and they will um, give you a very good um, understanding of God's personality, all sides of it. Um, and in doing that, again, that will bring your relationship with him um, closer and closer and closer. So anyway, um, I didn't mean to, uh, to ramble on about uh, the, the prayer of Jabez and pray blah, 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 blah. But yes, um, I do... Um, talk about uh, reading your Bible and, and, and a prayer life, um, an intimate prayer life um, with the Heavenly Father, um, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, um, both a, 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 um, a formal, le a formal um, level where you're, you're, you're bowing in, in all due respect, um, in humbleness, even, even prostrate, but also on a casual level, a conversational level. As you're going through your day, um, they can hear your thoughts anyway, 24 hours a day, so why not spend um, your waking hours um, talking to them as you're going throughout your day? Um, because when you're driving to work, they're there with you. So you can be, you can be busy talking to them out loud in the car or praying inside your head. Um, even, even sometimes when you're, um, what, what I've discovered, a good, good um, casual um, prayer, prayer exercise is, is there are sometimes when I'm talking with somebody and sometimes it can be negative, sometimes it can be positive, and personally I won't know what to say, but I know I should be saying something. So I will just pray in my head, okay, Heavenly Father, okay, Jesus, Holy Spirit, whatever the situation is, help me to say what needs to be said in the situation that will be of a benefit to that person, and, um, and, and, and so on and so on. Anyway, um, so that's, that's, that's the casual prayer life. Uh, okay. Um, now that uh, I think that that a rambling part is done. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? Uh, just what else um, I've been doing this summer. Why I have been absent from the internet. And I thank you all out there, um, my uh, um, faithful subscribers, who have been praying for me and um, who have been, been, been commenting. Um, I, I thank you for that support. Um, uh, and, and I ask that the Lord will, will, re, will repay it to you a hundredfold. Um, thank you for that blessing and um, for uh, for just being there with me in prayer and um, and and in thought. Um, so what else have I had been doing? I've been um, helping my sister with um, a family business that she had started. So I've been doing the kind of native thing. Um, one of the skills and talents the Lord has given uh, my family is the ability to use our hands in a creative way. So my sister wanted to. Um, go to a um, native powwow 
and um, set up a sales booth and sell um, handmade um, arts and crafts that the family has been doing and we've all been putting together um, for quite a while. Um, if you go to my other um, YouTube channel, um, you can find it. Um, just go to the home page of this channel and you'll see the columns where it says videos and links and, 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 and things like that. Click on the videos and it'll go to a row of uh, my other YouTube channels. And the YouTube channel of which I'm now speaking is called Heap Plenty Funny. Um, it's a native channel that um, I show um, native dancing, native drumming, native um, uh, regalia, um, dancers and whatnot at, 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 at native powwows. So I, I, I man that channel um, during the summer and also off and on um, during, during the off season. So if you want to see what I'm talking about in terms of native arts and crafts, um, you can go go to that channel, Heat Plenty Funny, and I've got a, a series of six videos there showing what I had been doing this summer with my sister um, at Native powwows and stuff like that. Anyway, um, I could show you um, uh, some other things here too right now <clears throat> because there's one more powwow my sister is going to um, next weekend. So I've been putting together um, some more um, items for her to, um, to, to sell um, with, her, with, with her company. Um, anyway, um, this is it right now. I will show you quickly. Let me just uh, get the uh, camera. Okay, this is the uh, the work area right here. You can see a bunch of leather and cutting tools and supplies and whatnot. And what I'm actually talking about is native stuff like that. Uh, making braids and uh, making pouches. Uh, making wristbands, uh, making lanyards, all sizes of uh, pouches and um, uh, all sorts of carriers and all sorts of other things. Um, other items, uh, smoke bags and things like that. So I've just been kind of helping her out uh, making some items there for her to uh, take and sell. So that's kept me um, pretty busy for the past couple of months um, helping out my family and helping out my sister um, but after after this month after the last powwow um, she's gonna turn it into an online business so I will still be helping out but I won't be as busy as I have been this summer so I will be making more videos after this so this is just kind of a update and a bit of encouragement and um, a bit of um, I hope that um, in uh, this past summer you're a lot stronger in the Lord. Um, you're a lot more knowledgeable um, of His Word because that's going to become very important um, once you hear the trumpet sound, once, uh, once the day of the rapture is coming. And um, yes, I am still um, waiting for the rapture. Um, as that uh, phrase goes, um, um, keep yourself busy like Jesus is never coming back, but be ready like it's going to be tonight. <clears throat> so basically, um, that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm helping out my sister, I'm helping out my family, I'm uh, trying to be a blessing out there in the world. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm still keeping an eye on the signs, I'm still keeping an eye on, uh, on, on what my fellow Christians are, are posting out there and what they're talking about and what the, uh, and what the general ambience is of uh, these uh, whole last days um, and uh, where we are and what's going on. Um, excuse me, I've been rambling for a bit. But anyway, um, what I think, um, based on the last two weeks, the last two weeks um, I've been on Facebook off and on. Not as much as I used to be, but I've been on there um, consistently um, throughout the week, over the last two weeks. And I've gotten a, a pretty good inkling of uh, where modern day Christendom is um, in terms of um, where they see the end times and how soon they see the rapture. And uh, now we're all coming up on this um, eclipse and of course um, Christians got to get in there, um, but mainly it's kind of a worldly thing. But it is still one of the signs, one of the many signs that we have to keep um, an eye on. It's not the sign where the rapture is going to happen. 
Um, and I noticed there was um, some sort of Jewish festival thing um, coming up. The year is changing and stuff like that. And I am still of the school, as I've been posting for a while now. Um, in terms of the rapture, I believe there is a set timeline that is written in the Bible that tells us approximately what world events have to happen, um, um, which uh, precede um, the rapture. Um, but also, I'm of the mindset that um, God is in control and um, whatever he says goes. So the rapture could be any second or the rapture could be following a perceived biblical timeline. We have absolutely no idea because we're not God. So I don't make any um, absolute conclusions of the rapture has got to happen at this point, blah, 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 blah. It could happen at any time because God is very merciful, uh, but at the same time, God um, is very strict and he's also very lenient too. And the longer it takes, the more he puts off the rapture, the more people there will be in the kingdom and the fewer people there will be left behind. Um, because Satan will be in control of the tribulation world, um, the mankind that has to face um, a satanically controlled planet, um, that man, that, 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 that breed of mankind that is left behind, they are certainly not going, going, going to enjoy any minute of it. Um, it'll be a, a horrible existence. And even, even once they get into the system, once they've taken the number of the beast and um, they're able to buy and sell, um, there's still a lot of um, pain and suffering that, um, that, that Satan is going to be putting them through because ba basically Satan hates mankind. And he's trying to um, torture them as much as he can. He's trying to hurt them as much as he can. He's trying to get mankind to pervert themselves and break as many of God's rules as he can. So when Satan, once Satan takes control of the tribulation world, um, the amount of people left behind um, are not going to have a lot of fun. So the longer our Heavenly Father puts off the rapture means the fewer people in, um, in mankind that will be left behind. The more will be taken, which is a good thing, and, um, and, and, the, and the least left behind, which will be a great thing, because there will be a lot of suffering. So I don't mind the rapture being put off um, for as long as the Father wants it, because it's in the best interest of everybody. But I also, at times, wish I were right now. I, I, I wish I were this hour, because I see so much suffering in the world. I know how much suffering is out there. Um, I don't watch the news. I, I just there, 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 there are some things that, that, that I am aware of, of, of just basically how mankind can treat each other on a daily basis. And I know there's a lot of suffering going out there, and I pray um, a lot that the Heavenly Father would just have mercy on mankind right now and just sort everybody out. Um, take all the, all the good people um, in, in the rapture right now, um, this hour, um, take the other flock and take the main flock and just leave all the, all, all the wicked and evil people behind. Just separate us like that, just instantly. That's what I keep praying for. But at the same time, um, I'm, 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 I'm also of, of, of the mindset where, you know, um, as tough as this world is, um, it, uh, it does make people stronger. People do get uh, stronger in their character when they have to face these challenges, when they have to overcome these challenges, be they Christian or be they non-Christian. Um, and you Christians out there, um, should be doing what you can to overcome um, whatever it is in your life that challenges you, whatever hinders you, whatever keeps you back, um, to overcome that so that you can be a good example of, of, of a servant, so you can be out there helping the world so that they can, at, at the very least, on the day of the rapture, um, the Bible says, um, once people hear the trumpet sounds, mankind is going to be divided up um, into two groups, uh, okay, three groups for, for, for this. Um, one group is going to hear the trumpets as being something beautiful. Those will be the people that are going to be raptured. And one group is going to hear the trumpets as being something 
terrifying, something horrifying, something that just causes them so much terror. Those are the people that are going to be left behind. And the other people are, are uh, uh, or the other group are going to hear it as something harmonious, something pleasant, something that they will say, okay, that Christian that I know, this is the Jesus they're talking about. This is the trumpets they were talking about. This is the day of the rapture they were talking about. And that's when, um, and this is getting into a whole nother video thing. So um, we're, we're, we're on to a um, little rapture rambling um, on the hour of the rapture. Because um, as you know, and if you watch my past videos, um, I believe the rapture um, event is going to happen within an hour. Now, when you first hear the trumpets, um, there's going to be a, a, a portal, a, a gateway to heaven. Um, it'll be over top the Middle East. And from it, um, we'll ride um, Jesus and, and Gabriel and, and, and Michael and all the angels will, will follow behind them. But, um, but underneath them will be a cloud. <clears throat> and it'll be a bright shining cloud for those that are going to be raptured. But for everybody else, it'll be a cloud that'll cover the entire planet within the hour. Because when Jesus and everybody and, and the angels come down for the rapture um, at the sound of the trumpets, um, they're going to be coming down over top the Middle East, and then they're going to be making a circle around the planet, and that'll take an hour, an hour to encircle the planet, and then get back up into um, the portal. And it'll be during that hour, that's when all the rapture events happen. And as I've seen it in my own head with my own visions and stuff like that, when the trumpets stop, um, those in the so-called other flock... Um, because I believe during the rapture um, there there are two groups of people that are leaving. There's the main flock, those that are the bride of Christ, those that are the body of Christ, um, the Christians, both those that have been risen from the dead and those are inst those that are instantly raptured. And the other group will be the ones that Enoch talked about, the ones that have um, uh, um, n n no honor. Um, and that is because they are the other flock. They are the consecrated and the sanctified um, loved ones. They are um, um, the downhearted, um, the low in spirit, um, uh, the, the third worlders, the one that the Lord has mercy on. Um, they, they, are the, they are the are the other flock um, that are raptured. They just get um, a, a robe um, and then they get drawn up into heaven. Whereas you servants, um, you get a beautiful gown custom designed for you and um, when you get your raptured body, you can fly all over the place. You have control over flight. You can fly in and out of the rapture cloud. You can go visit everybody here. You can fly ahead of the rapture cloud during, during that hour. But also what I've, I've, I've also seen um, is um, during the first five minutes, okay, say, let's set this scenario. Um, how long has this been? Uh, I've got a new memory card so I can ramble and ramble and ramble and I'm just going to go and um, until it feels like I should stop. Okay, so now um, let's set the scenario here for how I see um, the, fur the, 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 the rapture hour. Okay, as, as I've said, um, we hear the trumpets and we see the portal over top the Middle East. Um, out, out of it rides um, Jesus and this great big huge massive cloud that's, 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 that's about a continent wide. It's this, it's this massive cloud that once it starts, starts coming down over top the earth and, and, and circling the earth, um, once it does a full circle, the entire planet is going to be covered in a cloud. But um, as they start to ride, as, as, as the trumpet stops, that's when um, the dead in Christ rise. So once you hear the trumpets, if you, um, a believer, happen to be standing near um, a cemetery or a gravesite, you're going to be seeing, being seeing, see, you're, you're going to see some of those um, graves explode. Um, but they won't explode like dirt exploding everywhere. Um, what, what you'll see is the ground explode with light and the dirt itself will kind of sink in because all the matter that was there, um, all, all the dead matter, God has reassembled all the matter of that person, all that decayed matter. God um, is so almighty, so omnipresent, um, so omniscient, um, so 
so almighty that he knows exactly where every atom, every molecule, every particle of a person is that has been dead for 6,000 years. So he can recall them all back, suck them all back together, take all those little particles from everywhere and reassemble that body in a glorified way. So if you're standing near, near a graveyard, you're going to see the person um, that used to be there or uh, yeah, the, a person that used to be alive but died and their, their body is all decayed, you're going to see them reassembled and they will rise above the ground and they will be totally brand new, totally regenerated. You will see the dead in Christ rise first. So all the people that have, have been dead for thousands of years that Jesus has called out of the grave, you will see them in their glorified body and their robes and, and they will rise up to heaven first. You will see all these people from from the graves um, during during the first few minutes after the trumpets. You will see them rise from the grave. They'll they'll they'll, they'll rise from the oceans. All the ones that have died thousands of years ago in the oceans, God's going to reassemble them. They'll rise from the they'll rise from everywhere, and they will join Jesus as He starts to come down and encircle the planet. And so the cloud is going to increase because the dead from all the world, the world over, are going to be rising up and joining in the cloud. And once the dead have stopped that, however long it takes, we have no idea how long that's going to take. It could take five minutes, it could take ten minutes, we have no idea how long it's going to take. But once the Christ, uh, once the dead in Christ have risen first, have, have, have risen first, then we who are alive will be transformed. We will get our raptured bodies. <clears throat> and this is the cool thing that I've seen. Um, once the rapture event happens, um, if there were a, a, a non-believer standing beside you when your body is transformed, what he's going to see um, is, 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 is you're going to change instantly. In, in the blink of an eye, you will be the you that you are now. You will be instantly changed into a glorified, rejuvenated, regenerated you that is perfect and without sin and it just it has, a, has a brand new body, a youthful appearance, a young appearance, a powerful glorified appearance. Instantly they will see. But from your point of view, and this is where eternity comes in because God exists outside of time, heavenly matter exists outside of time, but once God opens up um, the, 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 the entire universe, once that portal is open, He's free to do whatever else he wants um, with, with, with the planet because he's got. So once your body um, starts to um, change, you can watch your hand change and you can watch everything change as quickly or as slowly as you want. Because for the people who exist in real time, they will see an instant change. But because you're stepping into eternity, you, you can see it as if you were inside the heavenly realm and in, in heaven there is no time at all. Time does not exist. So you could watch your body change in, from your point of view. You could see it happen in five minutes. You could see it happen in ten minutes. You could watch everything, your whole body being changed and glorified and all, all, the, all, the, all the stars and the twinkling and the lights and all, all the molecules and atoms changing. You could watch that slowly happen, you know, in two, three seconds, or you can watch it happen in, in like five minutes. Because once you're inside eternity, time has no meaning. So once you're totally changed, if you want to watch it for five minutes, you will watch it for five minutes, and then you're back into the real world, and then you have to talk to your friends. Okay, this is where I see um, the glorified believers. This is where I see them they will then go to um, the other flock, the consecrated, their family, their friends. They will, um, they, they, they can either um, fly there to um, say, say, say um, an, unsaved, um, an unsaved brother. So say you're a believer and uh, your body has changed and you are now a totally rapture glorified person. Okay, you still have about 45 minutes until the rapture cloud gets around to your place. So now, <clears throat> you can, if the Lord puts it on your heart, if it is your calling, go speak to all the non-believers in your life. Because once they hear the trumpets, they're going to say, oh yeah, that believer that I know, they said this, this, this was going to happen. So during that hour, you can go to those people 
and you can talk to them and say, hey, hey, look me, look, look me, I change, I'm, 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 I'm totally raptured and glorified, Jesus is real, I told you, and, um, and they'll, and, and then they, at that point, can call upon the Lord, and thus be saved, because as the Bible says, you know, those, them that call upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved, so I believe, during that hour, um, we can be out there um, zipping back and forth because we will be able to travel at, at the speed of thought. We can go visit one family and once you're in their presence, again, once you're in their presence, once they're in the presence of a glorified body that is outside of time as well, um, you can have a five minute conversation with them, but in real time, it only takes two or three seconds. So once they get to understand, you know, they, what, what they have to do during that, fir during that first few minutes where they have to call upon the name of the Lord, they have to humble themselves, they have to confess, they have to repent, and they have to do all this in order to um, get to that point where by the time the rapture cloud comes over, the Lord will be merciful on them and he will save them as well. <clears throat> they may not have many rewards, but at least um, they will... Um, they, they will be saved. Um, um, Enoch calls the other flock, he calls them those without honor. Because um, at, the, at the wedding banquet, um, at the wedding ceremony, um, the body of Christ, those that are saved, um, they will be up there at the head table with Jesus and with God and with, and, 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 and with the Holy Spirit. But everybody else that has just made it into heaven, everybody else that's a part of the other flock, they will be out there in the audience. Um, they, they, they will be out there with the angels watching, um, watching everything. So those that are in the other flock that make it, um, because they're not in the body of Christ, um, but because God and Jesus has had mercy on them, um, they, will still, they will still be a citizen of heaven. Um, even though they won't be part of the, the, the Bride of Christ. So those that are in the Bride of Christ, um, they will um, be given authority and a position to rule and reign with Jesus during the thousand years of peace after the rapture. But the citizens of heaven, those in the other flock, because as Enoch says, they have no honor, um, they're not part of the Bride of Christ, um, they don't get any authority um, because they're not part of the Body of Christ, so they don't get to go down during the, um, during the, uh, the thousand years of peace. But to them um, and to anybody else, once you're in heaven, that is a blessing enough. So there will be plenty of, them to, uh, the, plenty of things um, for, the, for, for the other flock to do. Um, nobody's going to be jealous, nobody's going to be envious, nobody's going to be bitter or anything like that, because once you're in heaven, once you're in the presence of the Heavenly Father, you have complete understanding of everything, and you feel totally safe and secure, and, 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 and every positive emotion there is once you're in heaven. So um, you don't have to worry about anything negative or anything bad or anything bitter or anything jealous or anything stupid like that, because all those emotions are gone, all the bad memories are gone, everything, everything negative is gone once you're in heaven. So. Once the other flock and once the, um, once the main flock are all part of the rapture cloud, once the rapture cloud has, uh, has completely encircled the earth and, 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 and you have spoken to, uh, to all those people that the Lord puts on your heart um, to go visit with your raptured body, it could be that um, the Lord wants you to go, go speak to ten people out there who are friends, who have a basic understanding of the Lord and the rapture and everything, that the Lord wants wants you to, 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 to present them the truth that there is a Jesus, and then they will call upon the name of the Lord, and then and then they will but they will thus be saved. Or or he could ask you to call on forty people. It depends. We have no idea. But there could be forty years worth of work all condensed into um, into less than an hour because once the servant takes on the regenerated um, raptured um, appearance of Jesus um, the presence of Jesus once our body has been um, spliced with heavenly matter we we step outside of time and space we we, we are no longer bound by the clock once we're in heaven we're where we, we can do anything and time time to it's it's a hard thing to wrap your head around but uh, yes um, there can be 40 years worth of conversation stuffed into less than an hour as you um, the servant um, go around um, talking to the people that the Lord wants you to talk to um, once you got your raptured body um, because we in North America I believe what's going to be happening is 
in North America here will be one of the last places that the rapture cloud will cover. So I, I've always seen in my mind the rapture cloud, um, uh, the, 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 yeah, the rapture cloud and all the people in it coming down over the Middle East and then circling down, um, going, uh, uh, that would be eastward, I think. And um, it covers Africa and then it covers everybody else and then slowly makes its way around to North America on the other side of the planet which could be um, anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes later. And then from there, it covers the rest of the planet and then makes its way back up to the portal. Either way, to encircle the entire planet takes about an hour. So there's going to be um, at least uh, um, 20 minutes to uh, 45 minutes, 50 minutes worth of time where you, a servant in your glorified raptured body, can be out there um, talking to the non-believers and getting them to realize Jesus is real and this is the hour and that they need to call upon the name of the Lord. Um, and I could ramble on more about um, how your your body, with your raptured body, because <clears throat> what I've also seen in my head, okay, I will, I, I will end with this, little, um, with this little scenario. What I've seen is um, um, when you get your raptured body and um, you're changed and all of a sudden right beside you um, is the guardian angel or angels that have always been there, um, that have always been looking after you. And they are going to um, give you a crash course on how to use your new glorified body and how to manu maneuver about in eternity and to uh, manipulate um, time and space and, and stuff like that. So they could give you an hour's worth of lesson um, inside eternity, but in the real world during the rapture, a second could pass by. Again, that's that, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Um, and so your angel, um, they could say, okay, I'm going to show you how to fly. And so they could show you how to fly so fast that you are moving at such a speed that the rest of the world is standing still. They're moving in slow motion. That's how fast you are going. You are going so fast that everybody's moving in slow motion. So you could fly from here uh, let's say let's let's say you're in Alaska. You could fly from Alaska to New Mexico in two or three seconds, um, and, and 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 that's no time. Then then you go to uh, then 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 once you're in, in New Mexico, you speak to that person the Lord wants you to speak to, and then all of a sudden the Lord says, "Okay, there's another person in New York I want you to speak to." Um, so you could fly there in two or three seconds, or you can just think yourself instantly in front of that person in a split second and you're there. And so I believe there's still going to be a bit of work, um, a bit more people to harvest once the main body has been raptured, once you hear the trumpets and once you see um, the dead in Christ rising first. And we have no idea when that's going to happen, but we know um, it is going to happen. So anyway, um, that's that. Uh, I think I'm going to end the rambling now. Um, we will end on that. Um, have a great summer wherever you are. Um, Jesus will be here one day soon, um, whether it's before the Antichrist rises or whether it's after. Either way, um, we can hope and pray for the best, but we should be ready for the worst. Um, okay, um, uh, that's about it. And the best way to be ready for the worst is to be in good relationship with the Father because we know God is in control. Satan cannot do anything unless God says it's time for him to go. Um, so the Antichrist can't take over unless God says, okay, it's time for, uh, for the end times to begin. There's uh, more than enough people going to heaven, and there's going to be very few people left behind. So remember, the longer he puts it off, the better. Anyway, um, be a blessing out there wherever you are in internet land and YouTube world. Um, have a great summer. Um, we'll talk to you later. Um, we'll see you at the Eastgate meetup. Um, take care, stay in prayer, and we'll see you in Jesus' kingdom somewhere over there. Okay, remember... Jesus rules.